We're called to raise up a what? Can't hear you. Because nothing is truly yours until you understand it. Naaman is the commander in chief of the Syrian army. And look what it says. Now, Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master. Now, all my Bible readers, I want to teach you when you read the Bible, observe. I want you to start observing things. Too many of us, when you read the Bible, you got to observe it, ask questions of it. And you will find and be shocked how much you'll grow and how much you'll see within scriptures that you've read before. Now, Naaman, somebody say Naaman. Naaman. Captain of the host of the king of Syria was a great man with his masters, with his master. And I'm going to ask you all an open book question. Everybody see he was a great man with his master, right? Now, I'm going to give you an open book test. I'm going to ask you, when we finish reading the scripture, why did he carry so much renown with his master, which is the king? And he was also honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. Apostle Janice, you remember me earlier talking about deliverance? Talking about the Savior? This is exactly what we're talking about. Because by him, the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. In other words, the Lord had worked through Naaman to cause Syria to have a, bunch, a lot of victories over other nations. So I got an open book test. Why did his king love him so much? I can't hear you. He caused Syria to be victorious. So he got favor with who? The king. If you can knock people out for me, I'm going to like you too. I go to New Orleans and everybody come try to get me and then you beat them all up. You're going to be my boy. It, somebody say it ain't deep. <laughs> By him the Lord has given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor. But, 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 he was a what? Anytime you see Old Testament, anytime you see leper, always think about sinner. Leprosy is a metaphor for a sinner because back then there was no cure for it. Only God could heal you. Other than that, you had to be separated from everybody else because it was contagious, just like sin is. And so, he's a leper, but he still got it going on. One of the dangerous things about being smart, being somebody in the world where they recognize you, you can forget that you too are a leper. And you need a savior. Because everybody can be leaning on you, calling you savior. Because you got the money. You got the bag. But look at this. He said, but he was a leper. Next verse. Here we go. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive of the land of Israel a little what? I can't hear you. A what? No. What's that little, what they call that that word in front of made. What's the English? What do they call little? That's descriptive, isn't it? He had brought away captive out of the land of Israel. A what? A what? It tells you little. Remember I told you observe? Little has to do with something. A little maid. Captive. Slave. A little maid. Shouldn't have been somebody you pay attention to. And some of us make the mistake of judging people who God sends to you. You got a little maid, but this little maid is the key to you getting healed. Now, are you too big to listen to the little maid? The land of Israel, little maid, she waited on Naaman's wife. She was Naaman's wife's servant. And she said unto Naaman's wife, it referred to as mystery. What to God, my Lord, talking about Naaman, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover, or we could say heal him of his what? Leprosy. Now, how many of y'all know they never heard anything like this? How does faith come? So he now hears from a little maid. 
Only a humble person is going to listen to a little person. I wonder if your answer has been delayed from you because you can only hear it from certain people. A little. Somebody say little. A little maid. And that lady said, I wish by my God that my Lord Naaman, if he can just get to Samaria, there's a prophet there, and he would recover him or heal him. Next verse, come on. Somebody stay with me. Come on. And one went in and told his Lord what she said. Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. Somebody say a maid. maid. I can't hear you. Maid. A what? Maid. Oh, we can say a slave. You mean you can only listen to certain people? Be careful. And the king of Syria said, go to go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver. This Naaman. Naaman, there's a lot of things happening here. Let's observe. I'm going to take y'all with Bible reading real quick. Let's observe what's happening here. A little maid who's from Israel knows that God is working through a prophet in Israel. She tells Naaman's wife, and then Naaman gets word of it. Everybody got it? Now watch the observation here. Naaman didn't just, once he heard it from the little maid, just leave the house and then go down to Israel. Watch the protocol. And the king of Syria said, go to go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. Because king talked to kings. Naaman, even though he was a mighty man of valor, even though he was a commander in chief, he couldn't just go into Israel's territory without a letter from a king. Because kings talk to kings. If you're in Christ, you have the potential to be a king. Kings talk to kings. And that's, that he sent a letter unto the king of Israel, and Naaman left with the letter. And notice, Naaman took with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 pieces of gold, and 10 changes of clothing or raiment, raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto you, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to you, that you may recover him of his leprosy. I got an observation here. The king of Syria sent the letter to the king of Israel. Let's see the king of Israel's response, William. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make a man alive that this man, this king of Syria, has sent unto me to heal a man of leprosy? And when the king of, uh, of Israel started considering, he says, Man, this guy is trying to seek a fight. You know what's interesting about this king of Syria? He doesn't know, or he needs to be reminded, who's in his kingdom. Naaman wasn't coming to see him. He was coming to see a prophet within his kingdom. I'm getting ready to close. Some of y'all going to be running around here. And it was so when Elisha, somebody say Elisha. Elisha the prophet represents God. Elisha the prophet represents God. Elisha the prophet represents God. God's going to do the healing. He's going to do it through Elisha's words. Everybody got it? Who's doing the healing? Through who? And it was when Elisha, the man of God, had heard the king of Israel and rent his clothes that Elisha sent to the king saying, man, why are you acting like this? Why are you tearing your clothes? Let him now come to me, and he shall know that there is a what? A prophet where? He's going to what? Lady? Is that you? Really? You know the Lord is with you. I don't know what you've been through. 
but you out of it now. Go back. Wherefore has you rent these clothes? He said, get this. Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet. Where? He shall know that there is a man that represents God in Israel. Prophets always point people back to God, not to themselves. Next verse. So Naaman came with his horses. Now you got to realize, Naaman is like a LeBron James. He's the man. How many of y'all know he, he's strutting like that? Got his chariots, got all his men's with him, Teddy. You can't tell Naaman nothing. And when you got pride, you'll forget that you're a leper. And God has no respect to person. He doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to him who you are and what you do. He's not impressed with any of us. So look at Naaman. Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. He's knocking at the door. Remember now, he's thinking of all that in a bag of chips. Let's see how the man of God responds. And Elisha sent a message. What? <laughs> what? I'm at your door. Now, you got to picture Naaman. Man, Naaman is, you got to realize all of Syria loves him. Like he's used to people just seeing and talking to him. So he's standing at that door, Sister Junie. And you're going to send a messenger? I'm not going to see the prophet face to face? Because Naaman made the mistake to think that this is that. He's thinking because he got it like that, that God does it like that. He doesn't understand that God doesn't care how many victories. He worked through you to win. When it comes down to him, you're going to either humble yourself or you're going to stay leper. You're going to stay a sinner. In other words, you don't come to him with your resume. Whatever you did, he helped you do it anyway. Yeah. And you got to always remember who's God. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Come on, somebody. You got to always remember. And look what he said. He says, and Elisha sent a messenger unto him, and I'm going back to baptism. If you believe what Jesus says, you do, you do what he say. God will give you ridiculous instructions. It don't make sense. And because he's prideful and he got an entourage, he went to Waffle House and they closed the whole thing. <laughs> they shut the whole thing down. They won't even let people come in the parking lot. He thinks this is that. So look what God does. He says through his messenger to him. The prophet didn't even come out to see him, man. He, he sent a runner. And the runner says, go and wash, there's our word, in the what? Jordan River. Seven times and your flesh shall come again to you and you shall be what? There's our word. Old Testament le leprosy, type of sinner. The only person who can cleanse you of sin is a Savior. So he tells you to do ridiculous things. Get baptized. Identify with Christ. Identify with his uh, death, burial, and resurrection. And I know some of y'all like, man, that just don't make sense. I just don't understand. I know you don't. That's why he gives you somebody to share it with you and help you understand it. Go and wash in the Jordan how many times? Yeah. And your flesh shall come again to you and you shall be what? Please. But Naaman was angry. 
Here's the other thing you may not know. One of the reasons they didn't know Naaman had leprosy, because remember, as a commander in chief, he had all his armor on. So he was able to hide the skin condition. You couldn't see it. But even though you can hide it, don't mean it's not still there. Don't we hide what we used to be sometimes? Wearing all your sharp suits but still dirty? Come on now. Come on. Got the new car but still riding dirty? <laughs> but Naaman was angry and went away and said, Did y'all see this? Teddy, he, he leaves. Oh, I need my entourage. Can I get my entourage? Can I get my entourage? He leave. Come on, entourage. You, you be with my entourage. Come on. Matter of fact, y'all be with my entourage here. I like y'all glasses. Come on, I need an entourage. Come on. <laughs> come on. This is my entourage right here. So I'm mad, number one, the prophet ain't come see me. And then this joke going to tell me washing this old dirty Jordan. Amen. Now, I'm angry, but I'm still a leper. If I don't get cured, I'm going to die. But I got my boys with me. Come on, y'all, come on. Y'all, come on with me. <laughs> man, this man got me doing this. <laughs> now, God will always, if you're wise, keep somebody around you who will help you. So one of his entourage says to him, he said, behold, this is what Naaman saying, I thought that's what get us in trouble. What you thought got you where you are. So why do we need to hear what you thought? He said, I thought he was surely, because he think this is that. So he's thinking he run the show. I thought he would surely come out personally and put his hands on me and stand in front of me and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hands over me. It sounds like he God. What? He forgot, Joseph, that this is not that. You going to come to God, Harold? You going to humble yourself. R is just like track and field. If you decide you won't run the race, are you going to run it your way? I'm going to sit at the finish line because you're going to come back around. Because that's what's going to happen. You do it your own way. You won't humble yourself and do what God told you. You'll come back around. We'll see you. you now, you could save yourself a whole lot of <laughs> time and heartache if you just humble yourself and do what he tell you. So look, he said, and he will surely come to me and stand and strike his hands over me and recover the leprosy. Next verse. Now he's given suggestions of cleaner rivers that's in, Samir in Syria. <laughs> so he already, this Jordan River, dirty. So now he says, man, I want to go uh, in Syria. We got cleaner rivers. Naaman forgot. Sirius told me to say that again. Sirius <laughs> told me to say that again, did she? Right? This is not that. <laughs> Come on, everybody say it. This is You come into the kingdom, all your titles, all that's good. All your degrees, all that's good. But you only come in Christ's kingdom through humility. And, yeah, and he modeled it, didn't he? He modeled it. It said, Philippians, he thought in our robbery to be equal to, with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and became obedient even to death, death on the cross. For who? Come on now. Come on now. I know you're getting this. I know you're getting a better understanding of your salvation. I know you're a better understanding that you're the royalty of God. 
and you you walk by faith, not by what? And are not Abna and Far, Farpar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away of rage. Got his boys with him. Next verse. And his servant came. Servant. Read it. Came and said what? My father. My father. If the prophet had did the... If the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much rather when he said to you, wash and what? What are we talking about? Baptism. It's an outward sign of an inward work. It's an outward sign of an inward work. He has leprosy, symbolic to sinner. Sin, right? The only person can clean him. And this dispensation physically is God. The only person who can cleanse you spiritually is God. And he does it through who? Jesus Christ. Then went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan. Somebody say ridiculous instruction. According to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child. Isn't it interesting? A little child is humble. A little child does what you say. Isn't it interesting? A little maid got him there. A little child allowed him to obtain what he came for. Follow the ridiculous instructions. Sometimes husband and wife, your husband may be having a bad year. <laughs> Somebody would thought I was going to say a bad week. I'm talking about a bad year. <laughs> you got to get with God and get some ridiculous instructions. Because everything in you will want to hold them accountable for everything. But you don't realize that God is doing something in him so it can change up to seven generations. Come on, somebody say, come on, can I get a shout from the back? Can I get a shout from the back? Then he went down, went where? Down. Everybody say humility. And dipped himself how many times? In the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was what? Amen. What if I told you God already sees you and declared you clean? And he uses tangible things for symbolism. That's why in 1 Corinthians he says, and such were some of you but you've been washed. I'm so glad I got washed. I led a gentleman to the Lord this morning. He was inside of a hotel lobby. I went in the lobby. I was just looking at the TV, and I noticed there were signs in the lobby that said, a spiritual meeting's going on. And I'm like, spiritual meeting? No church, nothing. It was just spiritual. This guy named Lawrence, 80, 67 years old, came next to me, and I asked him, I said, you here for this meeting? He said, yes. I said, what is it? He said, oh, people come from all over the country who are recovering alcoholics in all kind of drug addictions and things like that. And he said, man, it's been good. And he said, I'm a recovering something. So I'm listening to him, and I'm hearing the Holy Spirit just talk to him. I said, I said Mr. Lawrence, he's 67. I said, have you ever... Uh, ran on a relay team? He said, yeah, I used to run the four by eight at Sumner. Any Sumner in the house? Sumner? Yeah. He said Sumner. He's 67. And I said, the Lord has showed me something about you. This, these meetings that you meant to has helped you, but I still hear that you're afraid that you may go back to it. I, and he said, I got four sons and I got two daughters. And I begin to speak to him and I begin to say what the Holy Spirit gave him. I said, sir, God has shown me that your whole family is clean. I just begin to speak what God said to me. And when, when you hear the word clean, that means God in his spirit realm has said this person, because he's a patriarch, 
his family is cleansed because he would 20 minutes later give his life to the Lord while I lead him to the Lord while looking right in front of that TV. Those people were all over. And I said to him, I said, sir, the relay race I see you run is like a four by one. And I said, and a lot of the, 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 the help you've gotten, it's helped you. And it's allowed you to be away from alcohol for a year or so. But I still hear you saying recovering. I still hear you saying that's what you are. I said, sir, I end up giving my life to Jesus Christ my junior year in college. And I said, I didn't know. And my parents sent us to church. You guys have heard it. But I never knew anything about the Lord. I never knew about a nature change like I talked about that pig. My nature, my parents were great. They were great disciplinarians. I feared my father and mother. My mother, about a week, three weeks ago, said, don't tell me nothing else I didn't know about. Because <laughs> sometimes your parents, when the three boys turn out well and you raise another cousin, like, and that turns out well, parents ready to put their cards out for the greatest parents of the year. Well, you don't realize, yes, it's your parental responsibility, but also the grace of God. It's the things that God revealed to me that they never knew about. It's my brother getting arrested who's a CPA today for pulling up a bus stop sign for no reason because that's what sinners do. But now we're all saved and my nature changed. I used to fight all the time, want to fight. Now I want to fight for people to get in the kingdom. I want to fight for people to understand your salvation, understand baptism, understand that God's going to give you ridiculous instructions, and it's for generations. My brothers and sisters, Brother Kenny Copeland and Sister Gloria listening to their testimony, hearing that they were in debt, hearing that they didn't hardly have a whole lot, but that they trusted what God said, that they will owe no man nothing, and to hear them say it over and over again that they took that serious and they began to make some changes in their lives with the help of the Holy Spirit and begin to now, the, now there's a, a channel they've influenced and, and, and so many people uh, has come out, his son-in-law, his daughter. One generation. God will change your lineage in one generation. Your decision to follow him. Ridiculous instructions, Naaman. But you just did it. Because you realize you're no longer the boss in this one. You're going to come to him, you come to him humbly. And he'll heal you. And for all you all that they call backslidden, anything like that, come on home. There's grace and favor in the house. Sometimes the churches punish people. No, this is the place. Come on home. Don't let the enemy keep you outside. You have teammates here. And as I finish with that story about Ukraine, they've been able to fight because the citizens were prepared. And that's the mandate on my life is to get the citizens ready where you're going to fight and win in your families. You're going to fight and win in your communities. You're going to win. You're no longer are going to be in the stands cheering you on the field. And just because you have a bad play don't mean you lost the game. I wouldn't be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame I'm not in the Pro Football Hall of Fame because they didn't catch balls on me. I'm there because I didn't quit. I learned from when they did catch a ball on me, and I went back out and had what's called selective amnesia. <laughs> if you're going to run this race, you're going to have to develop selective amnesia. Too many of us remember and quote the wrong stuff instead of the right stuff you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're the head and not the tail. 
You are above only and not beneath. You are the lender and not the borrower. Come on now. How do you cause this to happen? You got to start saying this. God has already said it. All he needs you to do is do a confession. Confession means, come on, last words. Confession means say the same thing. God call, him, call me clean, I'm clean. If, if, if it's... I'm thinking about coming to America. He said, if, if, if your mama call him Clay, Cassius, I'm going to call him Cassius, right? Call yourself whatever your father called you. And don't get into all these stupors, depression. When you sense any kind of stuff coming on you, begin to open your mouth and declare you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're the head, not the tail. And whatever you're going through is temporary. It's getting ready to change. You are the lender. Come on, say it. I am the what? And not the what? I, I'm the lender. And not the what? I steward well. Come on, open your mouth. I steward well. Everything God has given me. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give God a hand. Thank you. Thank you to my... Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, let's give God a shout in this place. Come on.